One of the most classic physics problems that um, people think about when they hear um, physics is uh, dealing with projectile motion. So um, a projectile is just any object that you throw or is somehow traveling through the air under the influence of gravity. So the key observation for understanding what's going on with projectiles uh, is just that the only force on a projectile is gravity. Um, if you wanted to do a much, much more complicated analysis, you could include air resistance, but for this class we will be totally ignoring air resistance. Um, and if that is disturbing for you, um, I would say that uh, if you are considering projectiles that are sort of normal in size and speed, like if you're throwing a ball, for instance, um, air resistance is pretty negligible. Um, air resistance only becomes important if an object is very large or if it's moving very fast. Um, and so for our normal everyday lives, objects are not that large and are not moving that fast, and so we can ignore the air resistance. But um, for studying, you know, how a you know, missile moves or something like that, or an airplane, or, you know, a, a curveball in baseball or something like that, for those you need to know all about the air resistance. But for the sorts of things we'll be doing, that won't be important. Okay, so since the only force that we're going to consider on projectiles is gravity, um, what that means is that the net force on those objects um, are just going to be the gravitational force on the object by the Earth. Okay, um, And the thing that's really nice about that is because we know the gravitational force, which is also called the weight, is just m times g, the acceleration is just going to be um, 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Okay, so um, the acceleration being completely downward has no horizontal component, um, and so we know that AX equals zero and AY equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared if you set up the usual coordinate system where X is horizontal and Y is vertical. Um, if you choose a different coordinate system, like you choose Y to be downward or um, you know Z to be upward or something like that, um, then you just adjust accordingly. There's not, uh, you know, it's just a difference of naming, but otherwise it's the same basic idea. Okay, um, and so because we have these two known accelerations um, in the x and y direction, um, we can use constant acceleration formulas to solve projectile motion problems. Okay, so let me just give you a straightforward example to see how this works. For this problem, I'm going to demonstrate what happens when a ball rolls off the table. Okay, so the information that we're going to start with is that the table is 1.0 meters tall, um, and the ball is going to roll off the table with an initial velocity of two meters per second. Okay. Um, I know that'll be a horizontal velocity because as the ball is rolling along the table, it's moving horizontally and it won't pick up any vertical component of velocity until after it leaves the table. The information we want to find then is where the ball lands. Okay, so it's going to travel some amount in the X direction and that's what we want to find. Okay, so what we want to do to solve this or any projectile motion problem is consider the X and Y motions separately. So I'm going to start with X. So the initial velocity in the x direction is going to be 2 meters per second, um, because that's given. And again, we know it's horizontal because it's uh, rolling off of a flat table as the, the projectile motion begins. Um, the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. Um, it's going to be zero because the um, only force that's on the ball is gravity, and gravity pulls the ball downward. Um, because the acceleration in the x direction is zero, that means that the final velocity is going to be the same as the initial velocity. That's not going to change during the motion. Um, what other pieces of information do we look for in a constant acceleration problem? Well, we have delta x, which is the thing that we're looking for, so we don't know that yet, and delta t, which we also don't have enough information to find. Okay, so at this point, we switch over to looking at what's going on in the y direction. So the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, because the ball is initially just moving horizontally with no vertical component. Um, the acceleration in the y direction, we know, it's going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or I'm going to round that to negative 10 meters per second squared. Um, on exams and quizzes and discussions, um, and when you're practicing, I encourage you to round G just to 10. It makes everything a lot easier. Um, for Wiley homework, you should definitely stick with 9.8 because it does have a small tolerance for um, the answer being off a little bit. But otherwise, I think 10 is just as good for most purposes. Okay, so then we have the final velocity in the Y direction, which we don't know. So um, sometimes people want to say that it's zero because the, when it hits the ground, the ball's going to come to a stop. But what we want to think about for projectile motion is the part where it's just operating under gravity. And so just before the ball hits the ground or as it's hitting the ground, it'll be moving quite fast. And then what happens after that point is no longer projectile motion because there's other forces involved that are going to affect its motion. So we don't know how fast it's going as it hits the ground. Um, what about delta t? Well, we don't know delta t. So I'm going to put a question mark for that. Um, we do know how far it goes in the vertical direction though. So delta y, is going to be negative 1.0 meters. Why negative? Well, because it starts at a higher um, level and then goes downward. So its displacement is one meter downward. Um, and because I have set up a coordinate system where y is um, upwards, um, it has to be negative. If you mess up the signs, um, usually you'll get an answer that doesn't make any sense, which um, can be a clue to go look for that. Okay, 
So we know more information about what's going on in the, uh, the y direction than we do in the x direction. Because if we know the initial velocity, we know the acceleration, and we know the delta y, then we can solve for the time. So let's do that. Um, what I'm going to do is use delta y equals 1 half a delta t squared plus v naught y delta t. Then this a is specifically the a y. Um, and so if we plug in the numbers we know, then the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. So that whole term becomes zero. And um, I get negative 1.0 meters equals 1 half times negative 5.0 meters per second squared times delta t squared. Sorry, uh, got ahead of myself. Not negative 5, negative 10 uh, meters per second squared. Um, and then when I uh, solve for delta t squared, I'm going to get negative 1 divided by 10 and then a 2. And so I'm going to have uh, 5, 0 0.2. Uh, second squared, because the meters will cancel and I'll have second squared left over, equals delta t squared. And so then I get delta t equals, uh, plugging this into a calculator, I get 0 0.44 seconds. Okay, so that seems like a lot of work for something that wasn't what we were actually looking for, but check this out. We know the delta t now, and so we can plug that in for the x direction as well, because however much time it takes for the ball to get down to the floor is how much time it takes for it to get to whatever x position it ends up at as well. So that time is going to be the same for both problems, and that's very often going to be the connection that we use in projectile motion problems, that the time is the same for both parts. Okay, so now we know the time, and we know the velocity, and we can find delta x. So using delta x equals v naught x, or v initial x, times delta t uh, plus 1 half a delta t squared, but the acceleration is zero in the x direction, so this term is zero. Then I just get delta x equals the initial velocity, 2 meters per second, um, times delta t, which is 0 0.44 seconds, and that comes out to 0 0.88 meters. So the ball moves um, 0 0.88 meters away from the table during the time that it falls. Okay, so this is a lot of stuff. You'll get some chances to practice this. Um, but what I would like you to do now is to try to solve a very similar pro problem to the one that I just gave you. So for practice, um, consider a ball rolling off a table again. Um, we'll assume that the table is one meter tall again. Um, but this time we know delta x is 0 0.5 meters. So the ball doesn't go as far. And now we want to find the initial velocity in the x direction. Okay, so um, the same basic setup, but the solution will look a little bit different because you have some different information. So go ahead and give that a try.